Hello, this is Paul Oswald for Travelmail.co.uk. I'm here this morning in central London on the South Bank to talk to Amanda Lamb, presenter of Channel 4's A Place in the Sun. Amanda's about to take her live exhibition of A Place in the Sun up to Manchester and I'm here ahead of time to find out a few tips for people buying property abroad for the first time and also find out a bit about Amanda's travel background. Amanda, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Um, we're here to talk about mainly the Place in the Sun live exhibition, mm -hmm. which is going to be nationwide very soon. Can you tell us a bit about what people should expect? It is, yeah. We start off in Manchester. We're doing one at the GMEX there um, at the end of February. Um, it's basically a one-stop shop for people that are thinking of buying abroad. And I think the thing is, nowadays, there are so many more people that want to. The great thing about Place in the Sun live exhibitions is that you've got hundreds of exhibitors there. You've got lots of different people like myself, Johnny and Jasmine from Place in the Sun Home and Away. We're all going to be there. You can ask as many questions as you want. There are people there that can help you with the money aspect of it, with the legal side of it. So it's really, it is a kind of one-stop shop really. Yeah. Um, you recently bought your own Place in the Sun in uh, Puglia in Italy. Yes. Um, why did you choose that destination? I think I chose it for lots of reasons. I've always loved Italy um, and we were filming out there and it was the third apartment that we were showing the house hunters and I sort of walked in and thought, gosh, this is gorgeous and <laughs> they bought it, which um, I thought gazumping them probably wasn't the best career move. So, um, But I spoke to the developer and I sort of said, look, if ever you get anything else like this, will you let me know? And about a month later he called and said that we've got this great one in Nardo. Um, so I bought it. It's quite scary, really, because I spend my life telling people how to do it. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm going to have to set up an Italian bank account. I'm going to have to do this and that. But um, I completed on it um, a couple of months ago. And now I've just got to get it all, all done up because it's a wreck at the moment. It's a shell. Right. Mm. Fantastic. Um, and were there any other destinations that you considered at all? Or just... There's always destinations. I mean, every single year. I, I've lost count of the amount of times myself and the crew get together and we think, well, if we all put 20 grand each in, then we can do this and we can do that. I mean, I think, for me personally, favourite destinations have always been, um, I loved Italy. We went to um, Krakow in Poland this year. And I have to admit, before I went, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's going to be a bit grey and lifeless and ex-communist and, and not very nice. It's one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. So I thought that was that was amazing. Um, I'm a big fan of um, the Costa de la Luz in Spain, so sort of Tarifa and, and that sort of area. But yeah, every year when we do the programme, we're always kind of thinking, well, wouldn't it be lovely to have something like that? Yeah, it must be hard to choose sometimes. <laughs> it is. Um, what would you say are the most important things for people thinking about buying for the first time abroad? What are the the most important things to, to bear in mind? I think the biggest piece of advice I can give anyone thinking of buying abroad would be to make sure you carry out as much research as you can before you even set foot on a plane to go to the country. So visit Place in the Sun Live exhibition, buy the magazines, watch the programmes, go on the internet. I think the trouble is there's always that fear for Brits that they're going to get ripped off because they're Brits. Sure. So if you can have as much information as possible about how much, let's say you want a farmhouse in the middle of um, the middle of Tuscany, look on the internet, go to these exhibitions so you know roughly how much you're going to pay for it. Um, number two is get good independent legal advice. Most of the horror stories that I hear about are from people that haven't employed lawyers. There was a statistic floating around somewhere that said 60% of Brits that buy abroad don't employ a lawyer, which is bizarre because you wouldn't dream of doing it in this country. And I think that's the other bit of advice. Don't do anything abroad that you wouldn't do in this country. So sure. don't hand over money to estate agents, which I've heard of before. Um, you know, I've heard of people that have handed 20 grand over to estate agents that they've never met and of properties they've never even seen. Um, and I think that one of the other things is think about why you're buying, what you want to get out of your property. Um, do you want to make money? Do you want to make a fast buck and turn it over really quickly? Do you want somewhere that you can go and enjoy with your family? I think a lot of that has to come into account. And don't be fooled by the greed factor. You know, a lot of people, oh, it's just too good to be true. We'll have to buy it. And it's kind of, well, if it's too good to be true, there's probably a reason why. <laughs> and just take your time and don't rush into it. And what have been your favourite destinations? Uh, any countries you especially Australia. I love Australia. And hopefully, I think, fingers crossed, we're going back to do some more there this year. Um, Western Australia in particular is an area called Margaret River, which mm. is just, for me, I think the most beautiful place on earth. Um, mm. Far too far to get to, but absolutely amazing. Um, I like a lot of um, certain parts of America as well, um, and I, you know, funnily enough, I've not done all the Scandinavian countries. That's somewhere I'd quite like to go. 
but in the summer. <laughs> that's something I was going to ask you next, actually. Is there anywhere else that you haven't been that's on your list of um, uh, upcoming trips? South America I've, I've never done. Yeah. And I think that that's actually going to be quite an interesting new property area. I hear a lot of people sort of talking about that. So South America would be great. Um, and I think Asia. Um, there's a lot of places there. I've been to Thailand and places like that. But Malaysia's one to look into at the moment. I, um, one of the low-cost airlines is going to start flying there. So once that happens the prices are going to go up and they've just changed all the laws there that enable Brits to buy there now so I think that's going to be quite an interesting one but yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to going back to Oz that's for definite. <laughs> um, what for you has been the most inspiring episode of A Place in the Sun? There have been some great stories but um, are there any that stand out for you? Yeah there is there's one in particular um, that stands out it was a couple that we took to Crete a couple of years ago um, Jed and Julie Hoban um, and they lost their daughter Sarah to um, bowel cancer when she was 16 and Crete was their favourite place to go with her. And you kind of sometimes you're really gunning for them, you know, and you really want them to find something. And, and they did. And they, and they bought an apartment and there were all lots of tears at the end. And, and they've now set up a, a charity, Sarah's Hope Foundation, um, because what they want to do eventually is, is buy another property out there that they can enable families with children with terminal cancer to go out and have a holiday. Um, so that's actually, the, it's kind of, it, it sort of spawned this whole new new thing. Not only have they looked for a holiday home, but they're now also going to hopefully do some do some good with it. Uh, so where shall we all move to when, uh, when the recession hits? Like, <laughs> we all get out of here. All I think, oh, I think in terms of hotspots, I would say it because I've just bought there, but I think southern Italy, definitely, the whole the whole area from the from the heel to the to the big toe to the sort of arch bit, that, that's an area definitely worth looking out for. Because I've always thought, Southern Italy is very much the sort of poor relation to Northern Italy. It's not as manicured and, and, and posh as, as Northern Italy. And I think that people are slowly cottoning on to that. And what's happened is you've got a lot of the villages there where the youngsters have moved and they've gone to Milan or they've gone to, to the north, but then they've come back and they've started buying up property. So you'll see a big, a big rise there. There's a place called um, Alentejo in Portugal, the Alentejo region. That mark my words will rock it that's a bit like the cape verde islands it's sort of to the east of lisbon um obviously because you'd be in the sea otherwise it's to the east of <laughs> lisbon going up towards spain um and up until recently there's been no international airports there but two of them have just been granted their international licenses which means flights will start going soon and when they do that's that's when they're going to go up i mean and i think that's quite a top tip for anyone thinking about buying abroad is Look at where the low-cost airlines are, are opening up routes. Because if it's easy to get to, you can get be guaranteed it's going to just keep going up and up in value. Sure. OK, I think uh, that about wraps things up. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to seeing you at Place in the Sun Live. It's a pleasure. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you.